you've both accrued experience and success, you know, in implementing engagement strategies in institutional and healthcare settings. How did you engage people in settings where there are a lot of competing priorities and where energy or sustainability sometimes needs to be secondary to crucial and timeline, uh, you know, health services needs? That's a good one. Ooh, Katie, do you want to start or? I can start, sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, competing priorities is basically my middle name. Um, that's that, that seems to be universal. I've never been in an organization where people have abundance of time and abundance of resources to show up and have innovative and novel conversations about topics that they may not know that much about. Um, that's the that's the starting condition. And so I've often, you know, what I what I recommend is 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 actually understanding your starting condition and then working with that condition. So assuming that everybody's going to come running towards you with wide open arms and hand you over all their ideas and their inspiration or um, even their complaints, because uh, complaints is data, too. Um, you know, is unrealistic. So really as a person who is designing any form of engagement at an organizational level, it's incumbent upon us to understand the reality of the people we're trying to engage. And that takes some fact finding, that takes a lot of listening, that might take some observation, and it certainly takes some, some patience. So by doing that, you then have this opportunity to meet people where they're at. So you're designing engagement that is relevant to them. And so that those competing priorities almost can evaporate because what you're offering actually helps to solve some of their challenges. You're not adding to the list. You're actually neutralizing some of what they've already got. So if they have budget challenges and you have a sustainability or energy um, initiative that you want people to to participate in or you need people to participate in that has some savings associated with it i mean this is sort of the low-hanging fruit of engagement um, around being able to attribute some of that savings to them so you're kind of helping to solve their problems through your work not uh adding to the to the burden and 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 creating more uh competition through the priorities I think that is a perfect way of phrasing it, which is the uh, thinking about what's in it for me from their perspective. And as Katie was mentioning, like, how does this solve their problems? So I'll give you an example of, of something that we've been dealing with here, which is in the healthcare setting, we have a lot of waste of supplies that are brought into patient rooms. Uh, and uh, I, for people who may not realize this, if you bring a lot of extra supplies into a patient room, when that person is discharged, a lot of this stuff has to be thrown out, never having been used. So worse than single use is no use whatsoever. So uh, we actually were working together. So collaborating with the clinical teams to be able to put together a video and collaborating with our green team. So this is also like our, our secret weapon at UHN is we have a green team and we're constantly trying to engage anybody who shows any sign of being sustainable, please join the green team because then you can help us, you know, help walk the talk and help engage your teams. Uh, so we had the green team work on a video that showcased all of the waste of supplies and then use that to be able to communicate to the people who are most bothered by it. So getting the distribution list for all the nurse managers who have to order those supplies and reorder the supplies and are often very, very, very upset by this kind of waste. And so giving them the opportunity to do a quantitative analysis, I was surprised. I thought, no one's going to have time for this. These are very, very busy people. There's absolutely no way we'll get any engagement. Not only did we get a pilot group volunteer themselves, we have six. So uh, we actually have too many pilots. We'll see how this goes in January. <laughs> is, is there such a thing as too many? Um, <laughs> There's no such thing as too many. So we're, we're just, we're working on making sure that this works out very nicely for all of all of the teams. Oh, that's amazing. And and Katie, I want to just come back on what you said about neutrality. And it's true that we tend to forget that sometimes competing comp uh, priorities are intersectional, right? So even if one might be more urgent or less important, like these things, it's important to, to look at the context when it comes to uh, wanting to address these priorities. And one uh, you know, once an issue is solved, then it, it's going to trickle down into solving maybe another issue and, and whatnot. 